السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to everyone joining us this evening uh, lecture number six of نبوة prophethood of Imam Laqani's Jawhara at Tawheed our class will be a bit shorter tonight we should end off by eight o'clock or eight fifteen so let's get into the topic immediately on this auspicious and blessed evening of Rabi' al-Awwal, of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah to bless us, our families, our friends, our teachers, our students on this evening and to accept um, the stuffs and this lesson that we attempt to share tonight. So I'll share my screen as usual. And our topic tonight, verse 60. And we continue with prophethood. We have mentioned the four attributes of, uh, of prophethood. And now we are going to mention the four attributes which are impossible for prophets. So in, le- in verse number 60, Imam Laqani says, Wa mithluda, And like that, like the three other attributes, number one, it was that they must have siddiq, truthfulness. Number two, prophets must have Amana, they must be sinless. Number three, prophets uh, must have a quality of fatana, brilliance. And number four, a rasul, a messenger, has an added attribute of tabligh. And therefore he says tabligh-uhum, which means to pass on or convey the message. Lima atau, as it came to them. So we'll define a prophet and a messenger shortly. But a prophet has three qualities, and a messenger has a fourth one, tabligh, to convey the message. And we've covered all of that two weeks back. We will conclude verse 60, hopefully tonight, where Imam Laqani says, وَيَسْتَحِيلُ And this word here means what is impossible for prophets. What is impossible, as opposed to what is wajib for them. And these were the qualities we mentioned. Here he goes on to what is impossible for them. And he simply says, ضِدُّهَا ضِد means opposite. The ha refers to these qualities. The opposite of the four mentioned qualities, which are wajib for prophets, these are impossible for prophets. Kama rawo, kama means like, rawo, it came um, in the narrations, in the Quran, in the Sunnah. So it's not only rational proof here, but it is textual proof. The dalil akli, the rational proof, is not talking about that. It's talking about riwaya, dalil nakli, as it came in the Quran and the Sunnah. So our four points tonight, what are impossible for the prophets? Number two, 12 aspects of the akhlaq of the anbiya. The akhlaq meaning the etiquette, comportment, the adab. And then we'll define properly a prophet, a nabi, and a messenger, a rasul. And then we'll start with part one on the gender of the prophets. So Imam, Imam Bajuri in the topic here, what are impossible for prophets? He says the following. Qawluhu, as for the saying of Imam Laqani, وَيَسْتَحِيلُ ضِدُّهَا That it's impossible for them to have the opposites of these qualities. Or the opposites are impossible. A, he says, وَيَسْتَحِيلُ And it's impossible with respect to them, alayhim salatu was salam, upon them be salutations and greetings, did sifat al arba'a al wajiba fi haqqihim. Did the opposite of the attributes, which are four in number, which are obligatory for them, um, in respect to the prophets. Fadiddu al amana. What is the opposite of amana? Amana we defined as a trustworthy state of the prophets, um, which we interpret as sinlessness. So the prophets are sinless. They have amana, they are righteous all the time. And the opposite of that is khiyana, treachery. So prophets are not treacherous. According to the Quran and the Sunnah, no prophets ever um, were 
people who had the quality of khiyana, treachery. While did do siddiq, the opposite of siddiq, and that's the second quality necessary for them is to be truthful, is al-kadib, to spread lies. Prophets don't lie, that's impossible for them according to the Quran and the Sunnah. And the third, wadiddul fatana, the opposite of sheer brilliance, which is necessary for prophets, al ghafla wa adam al fitna, is negligence and the absence of brilliance. These are impossible for prophets because they represent God and they have to be the brightest and most brilliant of people that walk the earth. What they do tablir, the opposite of conveying the message is kitman, to hide the message away. Kitman means to hide away. Kitmanu shay, to hide something, min ma, from that which, umiru bitablirihi, umiru, which they have been commanded, amr is a command, of tablir, to convey. So in summary, the four attributes that are necessary for prophets is number one, um, he says yeah, amana, that's number one, and that's trustworthiness. The opposite is impossible, treachery. The second is siddiq, truthfulness, the opposite being kadib, that's impossible, lies. The third, fatana, brilliance, that's necessary for them. The opposite being ghafla and uh, lack of insight. So penetrating insight is necessary for them. And number four, Tablir for the messengers is necessary, and to hide Kitman, that message, is impossible for them. Imam Bajuri then says, وَمَعْنَا إِسْتِحَالَتُهَا What does it mean to say that it's impossible for them? عَدَمُ قَبُولِهَا الثُّبُوتِ لَكِنْ بِدَلِيلْ الشَّرْعِي He says, uh, impossible for them, it means the non-acceptance of establishing that we don't accept that these qualities can be established in them. We reject it. But we do that on the basis of the Sharia, the Quran and the Sunnah, the textual proof. Because if you use rational proof only, then you might concoct up or think up, think up something in your mind. Look here, the Prophet is a human and it's possible for him to slip up and tell a lie. But according to the text, the divine text, we are taught that it's impossible, and here revelation is far beyond reason, although reason is one of the faculties and tools bestowed upon us to understand the text. Kama ashara ilayhi biqawlihi, like the author indicated to us by saying, kama rawo, as has been narrated. Fa inna al ma'na, so verily the meaning here will be, um, uh, like the scholars, the ulama rewired or narrated, has they narrated, min kitab wa sunnah wa ijma, from three sources, from the kitab, the Quran, from the sunnah, the authentic prophetic narrations, and ijma, the consensus of all the scholars, uh, the Muslims, throughout all the generations. They agree that it's impossible for a prophet to lie, to be treacherous, to hide his message, and to lack insight and be uh, dumb-witted or to be negligent of his message. And that covers point number one. Point number two, uh, a, a recap of the 12 aspects of the akhlaq, the etiquette of the prophets. And this is very interesting. And here we narrate from uh, Imam Samarqandi again, the Hanafi jurist in his book, Tanbih al-Ghafilin, where he says it's been narrated by Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, أنه قال that he said إثنى عشر خصلة من أخلاق الأنبياء that twelve things make up the the etiquette and good manners of prophets. أولها number one أنهم كانوا آمنين بوعد الله. The first aspect of prophethood is that they feel secure in the prof in in the promise to reward the promise of Allah. They are secure and firmly believe. Their faith is secure in everything Allah promises when it comes to his wa'ad, his, his reward, we could say, um, his reward for doing good, his pardoning for repentance, his overlooking of flaws, his promise, his threat to punish if people um, uh, 
acted out against other people in vile manners oppressed others and didn't set things right and so forth and so on in summary number one they are secure in allah's promise Wathani, number two kanu aysina min al khalq that they they despair they don't place their hopes in creation as much as they place their hopes in the creator in that sense the hope that they have in the creator it's as if they despair in the creation but in a positive way they hope more in the creator than the creation number three كانت عداوتهم من الشيطان. They are constantly battling the devils, the shayateen, be it from themselves or from the unseen. They are always in war against the lower self, the shaytan, and um, negative uh, things, which affects their faith and daily routine of doing good. والرابع, number four, كانوا مقبلين على أمر أنفسهم. They are always seeing to their affairs and setting their affairs straight. And that's important before they are um, set out to set the affairs of others straight, they set their own affairs straight first. The fifth quality of the prophets, كانوا مشفقين على الخلق. They are always in a sense of empathy and pity and, um, and, and in a, there as a sense of healing toward Allah's creation. They are a healing rather than a menace. They are a healing and they empathize with people. Number six, كانوا متحملين لأذى جميع الخلق. That they are prepared to bear the burdens of creation. They carry those burdens with them to guide people to a better life. والسابع, number seven, كانوا موقنين بالجنة. They, they have yakin certainty in their hearts regarding paradise. يعني إذا عملوا عملا أيقنوا أن الله تعالى لا يضيء ثوابهم ولا ثواب عملهم. They are certain when it comes to the promise to be placed in paradise. That means that if they carry out a good deed, they are certain that Allah will not. Um, cut them short of their reward and for the reward of the actions they were blessed to carry out. Wathaminu, number eight. Kanu mutawadi'ina fi mawadi al haq. They humble themselves before the truth. And that's the eighth quality of prophets. They humble themselves before the truth, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he was asked to define kibir arrogance, he said, batarul haq, it is to reject the truth. And the opposite of kibir is tawadu, humility, which is what? It is to humble the self before the truth. Watasi' number nine, kanu la yada'una nasiha fi mawdi il adawa. They are careful where they place advice. They don't advise um, uh, people they don't ad, they don't place advice in places it does not belong they put advice where it's supposed to be and they advise accordingly number 10 that their capital is to be in need of god that is the capital of prophethood in other words they don't hold on and praise their wealth and see that as their as uh, their means to success. But they spend it in the path of God um, uh, and place it where it's supposed to be to those in need. And that poverty uh, we call spiritual poverty, that they are more in need, their hearts are emptied of need of anything except God Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadi Ashra 11 Kanu. Um, they are always in a state of purification. And we are taught that wudu will be our light on the last day, crossing the sirat, across that jahannam, over to the gates of paradise. That ablution will shine bright and it will be a sense of, of light. And you can read, read Surah Tahrim for that, uh, uh, where a beautiful exposition is given about the light that won't be shared with others where they requested, and that light is said to be the wudu 
and purification taken by a person every day. The last point here, كانوا لا يفرحون بما وجدوا من الدنيا what they find and they and what comes their way of material blessings in this dunya, they don't rejoice in such a way that um, they don't rejoice, over rejoice about it. وَلَا يَغْتَمُّونَ عَلَى مَا فَاتَهُمْ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Nor do they grieve for what they lose. In other words, they are in a state of balance, whether they receive or whether things are taken away from them. Ibn Atta'illah in Hikam says it beautifully that um, if something is taken away from you by your Lord, then he knows better than you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he knows what is good for you and what is bad for you. And if we connect with that, then the taking away of things by our Lord from us is in fact his giving because he knows what benefits us and what is detrimental to us. Third point, defining a prophet and a messenger. Okay, we'll take Imam Bajuri's definition here from the Johara. He says, وَعَرَّفُوا تَعَرَّفُوا means to define. An-Nabi, a prophet. بِأَنَّهُ That he is as follows. Number one, insan. He must be a human being. Number two, ذَكَرُ Male. Number three, حُرٌ Free and not a slave. مِنْ بَنِي Adam, And he must come from the offspring of Adam. So excluded from this definition will be any beings from any other planet or some being that is not from the offspring of Nabi Adam. And this is how detailed and carefully they define words here. And we are defining a Nabi. Is male, uh, sorry, human, male, free, from the offspring of Adam. Salimun an munafir taba'an. And is free from any repelling or repulsive qualities. Now, once you have a definition like this in the madhab, and you find any of these qualities, the opposites of these, in the Quran or the Sunnah, then it's interpreted, ta'wil is applied, and it's interpreted because you, have, you now have the understanding of how to read the Quran from a theological perspective when it pertains to prophethood um, according to the madhab. So you have a guideline, and if you find a prophet, for example, where the repulsive quality you will then have to do some research and you'll probably find out it was before he became a prophet or it was not that bad or, or it was for a short period or something like that. But our purpose here is to define, not to go into the details. And then, uhiya ilayhi bishara, that revealed to him, uhiya ilayhi means revealed to him is a sacred law, a deen, a religion, ya'malubi, which he practices, wa in lam yu'mar bitablighihi, even if he was not commanded to pass the message on. That is a Nabi. He is not ordered to pass on his message. وَأَمَّا Rasul, As for a messenger. فَيُعْرَفُ بِمَا ذَكَرَ It is the same as how we mentioned. Exactly the same definition. Lakin, however, there is one subtle point here. مَعَ التَّقْيِيدِ There is a restriction. بِقَوْلِنَا With regard to our saying, this part here that is commanded to pass on the message, he is, uh, that is the restriction. He is commanded to pass on the message. So between these two, a prophet and a messenger, there is a, a general agreement between them from one angle and a restriction uh, in, uh, in another sense. Is a general aspect and a restriction. And the general things they share, they both are, they are all human, male, free from Adam, the offspring of Adam, free from any repulsive qualities. They've all received a, a, a revealed law. But the distinction is that a prophet does not have to pass on his message and a rasul, a messenger, must pass it on. And he says, لِأَنَّ كُلَّ رَسُولٍ nabi وَلَا aks. So every messenger, Rasul, is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. Because a messenger has one less attribute than a Rasul. Let me give you an example here. When we read uh, the opening of the Quran, the first verse, reveal, Iqra, read, revealed to the Prophet. Uh, it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told, Iqra, read, Bismi Rabbika Khalaq, in the name of your Lord. 
خلق الإنسان من علق و created from a cloth um, علم ال uh, and so forth and so on told him علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Allah um, has taught human being that which he knows not now that represents and identifies the nubuwa prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he's the, in no way in these five verses is there a command to pass on the message so most of the scholars of tawhid they say at this point the prophet became a nabi his nubuwa was established a time later when surah mudathir is revealed and allah ta'ala says ya ayyuhal mudathir oh you wrapped up qum stand up fa anzir warn he is now commanded to make tabligh to warn and his messengership is established so surah alaq represents the nubuwa the establishment of prophethood and surah mudathir establishes the prophet's risala ship or his messengership and that's the difference between a rasul and a nabi and then he says wa ja'ala ba'dhum ar-rusul a'am some say messengers are more general than prophets qal and they say li anna because ar-rusul takunu min al-mala'ika because angels are also messengers But that is not um, the, the point, our point here. We are talking about specific types of messengers who are prophets. We are excluding angels. وقال العلامة السعد التفتازاني and the great theologian and scholar of Tawheed التفتازاني he said هما متساويان prophets and messengers are متساويان they are one and the same thing. So the point here is that um, we acknowledge these differences because in the differences do we find the barakah and the blessings. You don't have to be fanatic that, you know, that's the only way and there's no other way. It's either my way or the highway. If you don't agree with me, then you're going to Jahannam. That is not the point at all. There's no barakah and blessings in doing that. Uh, we are reading a detailed text, so we will go with the flow with all the different opinions and appreciate them and grow with the diversity of opinions which our deen affords us and our rich history and legacy. So he says here, yeah, no, they are the same. Waqil, it's also said, Between them is a generality, umum, but there's also a specific element from specific angles. Because a nabi only, that a nabi is one who received wahi, and that is a sacred law, a sharia, Ya'mal bi, he practices it, wakhtassa bi, but it's exclusive to him. He doesn't have to share that with anyone else. That's a nabi. Wal rasul, as for a messenger, faqat, only a messenger, man uhiya ilayya bi shara, he also receives revelation, ya'malu bi, he practices it, wa yuballihuhu li ghayrihi, and he conveys it to others, wa lam yakhtass bi bi shay'an minhu, And there is nothing in it which is specific for himself. فَإِنْ اخْتَصَّ بِالْبَعْضِ وَبَلَغَ الْبَعْضِ فَهُوَ النَّبِيُّ وَالرَّسُولِ Then he makes an interesting uh, 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 comment here. He says, if they keep some of it to themselves and they share some of it, then that person must be a Nabi and a Rasul. Look at the various angles it is tackled from. If they share some and they keep some to themselves, they share in that nubuwa and risala ship of prophethood. And then he goes on, which we won't do now, because the definition said insaniya, a, a prophet must be a human. He goes, they were kharaja bil insan. What we eliminate or remove from the definition insan, baqiyatul hayawan, the rest of creation. They don't share in this. Um, but we won't go into that logical mantic point now. We've uh, done our, our, our job here. We have one more point left before we end off, and that is the gender of the prophets. Because here it says they must be male. And this is according to the vast majority in the madhab of the Asha'ira, which we're reading now, but that's not the only opinion. So let us just briefly touch you know, what you see. I have the gender of the prophets um, introduction and the detail. So we'll do the introduction today, this evening, and then we will touch on the detail next time. So let's look at the proof. Those who said that a prophet must be male, they quote Surah 21, verse 7. 
Allah Ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, wa ma arsalna qablaka. And we have not said, and we have not sent messengers before you, illa except rijalan, that they were male, nuhi ilayhim, and we inspired them with a sacred law, meaning we revealed a law to them. That's quite clear. But believe me, this verse is debated from various angles. Those who said women also share in prophets, making them prophetesses. Um, they quote Surah 28, verse 7, and they quote this. Wa and we gave wahi, or revealed, ila ummi Musa, the um, the mother of Moses, an arudi'i, that she fosters him and cares for him. So the debate here is as follows. If we claim, and let's go to our definition, that a prophet is someone who received revelation, wahi, then is not the mother of Moses here a recipient of wahi? So how do we argue against that? And that is the, de the debate we are going to enter and look at the detail of the arguments next time, insha'Allah ta'ala. So in conclusion, we have looked at um, the four attributes which are impossible for a prophet. Number one being that um, they cannot be untruthful, they cannot be treacherous, they cannot lie, and uh, they cannot hide the message, they cannot lack brilliance either. We then looked at um, a definition of a prophet, a definition of a rasul, the khilaf, the differences of opinion in there. We looked at the 12 akhlaq of prophets. We introduced prophets being male and female, possibly, and we'll conclude uh, that topic next, uh, in two weeks' time, inshallah. So on this auspicious night of Rabi al-Awwal, we know our mosques are all closed, we are all at home. Uh, may this night be a, 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 a healing for all of us. Rabi means spring. It is the beginning of spring and the birth of the Prophet represents that Rabi, that springtime, that blooming, that greenery, that lush time. And I think we are in, are we in spring? I think we are in the, in the season of spring right here um, in South Africa. So with that, in that spirit of, of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of springtime, of blooming and blossoming, may um, this night going forward be a healing for all of us, a blessing for all of us. May it grant us, um, all of us, whatever worries and problems we are going through, may we all find it in our hearts to connect to that prof prophetic spirit of rahmah, of mercy, of healing, of forgiveness, of love, of optimism, and may all our du'as on this evening be accepted. And let us read Surah Fatiha together and ask Allah that through this Fatiha, the Nur, the Barakah in it, that it is indeed a healing for us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim. غير المخضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما صفون سلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran, Sheikh.